you know, you got to think of it. You got to you gotta think of it like that, you know. Sorry, I keep forgetting that that's the back thing, isn't it? So yeah, that's, you know, what I think about content farming. To answer your question, I think there's a lot of bullshit happening on YouTube. I think I've thought of that for quite some time. But there you go. I need to see if we're on. Not the back or the front facing. You know, autistic mums need to learn not to put the. Not to film children having a meltdown. Um, it's a Bugs Bunny cut, mate. Let's take a look at that. Bugs Bunny. Or Rab, as I call him. What's up, Doc? I'm drinking cappuccino. But, you know, um, you get these middle-aged autism, autistic um, mums who need to go back to kindergarten they need to go back to parenting school. I'm not a parent, by the way, but I would not be putting my child having a meltdown on the internet. And not even non-autistic parents are doing it. Why? Because they haven't got the education there. Because the parents, you know, back in the day, when parents are having issues, you know what they used to do? They used to speak to other mums. Nowadays, what do they do? They go on the internet. Uh, little Timmy's having a meltdown. We don't know what to do about this. You have to learn to love that child. And when they're having a meltdown, you can't work out if they're bad or good. So the best thing to do is to take it. Do you know when I was a 12, I must have been about... I must have been about 12 or 13. And... When I have meltdowns, which are very rare, but I think it was a bit of a communication issue this one day. And I mean, it's happened since, but this was something, anyway. Um, I threw a shoe at mummy. Now, what did she do? It was the only day she didn't shout at me. She was shocked, you know, as any other parent would be. But I threw a shoe and I don't remember doing it. I don't, I don't remember throwing the shoe. The only thing that I remember was having an absolute bad morning. I think things had gone from bad to poo in the space of 10 minutes or whatever. I think it wasn't 10 minutes, I think. I think it had, but it had gone, things had started off bad. And then in the end, it just went, ooh, you know, that's it. But I 
a lot of mums nowadays, they would have filmed that. And hey, if it's not right, oh, oh, do it again, little Timmy, do it for the camera. Anyway, those, those mums, totally, totally, they're beyond. Anyway, um, I'm talking about the clueless ones, just the clueless ones for this video. You need to stop putting your children having meltdowns on, 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 on the internet. Um, it's nothing to do with consent. It's to do with the fact that people are getting off on this. I don't mean getting off as in, you know, ooh, uh, ooh, uh, you know, I don't mean that. Sorry for the action. Uh, but I have to do it because you know what I'm talking about, right? You do know what I'm talking about. There's a lot of people going, oh, that kid's gone viral. Oh, that kid's... Do you know, um, there are a lot of parents that are getting shocked over, and, and you know who you are, you're still making YouTube videos, a lot better YouTube videos, but you've shoved, you've shoved underneath the carpet that your worst videos were there. And you'll never admit you see, you're, doing, you're saying you're doing it to document it, but why? Why are you documenting it? Why couldn't you just have it to show teachers? That sort of shit you document for just, ed, you know, to show education people. People at school. So they know to not push little Timmy over the edge. I had one fantastic teacher in school. I'll tell you what she did. Uh -huh. Now, all the kids in my school, all the kids in my class, right? They knew me. In fact, there's a couple of people now that I see from school. And there's one person, I won't mention her name because I don't know if she's not, I, I've not seen her on social media. So I'll assume she isn't on the internet. So I won't mention her name. But she was absolutely shocked when she knew me now. And it's like, you know, talking about, I've, I've turned my YouTube channel, like, the whole thing is, I've, I've asked this person, I'm not gonna name her name, but I've asked this person to help me out with a bit of political shenanigans, right? As you know, but anyway, this one day, our form teacher there, um, I wasn't speaking. Um, I, something had gone on. It didn't just start with me being confused, but it had gone on like something had escalated. Um, which is none of no one's business, right? Something had escalated. I've, I'm speaking about this in my path part two, but do you know what she did, this, this teacher? She got everybody in my class to go and sit with me, right? Not only that, but she took the time Now, what I will never ever forget about that day is she put herself in the firing line and she just did what any good person should do. She spoke to me like a human being, like a human being. She didn't shout, she didn't yell. She spoke to me normally. Spoke to me properly. And after that, everybody was treading on eggshells because they knew what I was like. They knew when I was pissed off or angry, they knew. They were expecting, they weren't sure if I was gonna, they weren't sure I was gonna hit someone, you know? I've been in that situation, right? 
But this was different. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know whether to be angry or sad or... I wish I could have been. It was like I was seized up inside, you know? All my emotions. And some of it I was holding on to it. So when I did get over it, even though I hadn't got over it, but when I did get over it, when I was able to process everything, because nobody, well, I'm not saying nobody didn't speak to me that day. That's, you know, but they were a bit kind of, you were treading on eggshells. What's he going to do next? <laughs> you know, everybody um, in the whole classroom, in the whole common room, right? And guess who spoke to me? They waited until the very end of the day. It was about three or four o'clock. Um, I was about to leave. I was about to go for my taxi, right? And the head girl was fantastic. She um, pulled me aside. She'd just come in to get something. She said, Stephen, can I have a little word? I said, yeah, sure. Um, she closed the door and she said, Stephen, she said, I just want to ask, are you okay? I was like, yeah, yeah, sure, why? She's like, um, well, this morning in the chapel and everyone was like, you know, everyone's been this, that, and the other. I was like, you know, I'm fine. I was like, you know, I told everything. I, she kind of knew what went on. She'd seen it, but she didn't want to, she didn't want to have anything to do with me that day because she knew to stay well out of the way when I was angry. But I told her straight, I said, I'm fine now. I said, well, I'm, I'm not fine, but you know, I'm, I'm done with it. You know, just let me get home and let me process it kind of thing. But she turned around to me and she said, Stephen, you know, you can speak to me about anything if you want. I was like, yeah, I know that. I said, but this is something I can't explain. And um, she just right, okay. And she let me go. But you know, my uh, answer to that is, if there's, a, if there's a kid in the class who's being quiet, uh, yeah, they may be a twat or they may be, you know, they may fly off the handle, but when they're not, I think the silence is the worst thing Ever. I'll tell you a little story. This is a little one. There was um, in college. And I, I didn't know about autism like I know about it now. And I, I knew about it for myself, right? But when I went to college, a specialised college, um, there was a kid in there, he used to, a student in there, and he had some bad moments. And everyone saw him as this bad kid who flew off the handle, right? And one day, he was quiet, quiet as a mouse. So guess who went over to him? Me. I knew he liked the who. Um, so I just spoke to him. He liked the who and knew it. Uh, oh yeah, he was really into um, that band that do the cash machine song. So um, I just sat down and I would talk music with him. <laughs> he went up there, he was as happy as pie. I don't know what went on that day but it was a change that he couldn't, was out of his hands. If it was usually a drink, if it was the, if they gave him the wrong drink, well, bang, you know, or whatever, if it was something wrong, bang, you know. But this one day, there was a change that was completely out of his hands. I don't know if it was staffing or what. But I just went and I knew this was bad. You know, when you just sense something, I didn't know that silence was a bad thing. Well, you know, it's a bad thing. But anyway, I just went there and everyone was well out of his way. And they were like, oh, Stephen, why did you go over there? You know, even the staff, 
you know, but I just went down, sat down, and I just spoke to him. And I sang to him, I think. Sat there, sang with him. Me and another friend, we went over and we sat with him. And after break time was over, <laughs> stuff was like, wow, you're a brave man. <laughs> you know, but I did it because you just, I don't know, you, you sent something's off. And I personally, I didn't know what to do in that situation, but I knew that it was a bad atmosphere. Do you know when you sense a bad atmosphere? And I just thought, well, I'll just get him out of it. And um, at tea time, um, that day, because um, we used to go into the dining room, the big dining room for our tea. And I went for tea and every man and his dog was praising me. And I didn't know what for. I just sat with this student and spoke to him because I knew something was off. Couldn't actually put a finger on it, but you know. And um, they just said to me, you know, well done and uh, you know, thanks very much. And I just said, well, you know, I don't know what to do really, but it's in those little situations, you know, silence can be just as bad as someone kicking off, right, you know? Because in those situations, um, they don't even know what to do. And I was like, I was praised by all the staff in his house, like, you know, because, and um, I just said, well, I don't know what to talk to him about. And I'm into me rock music and, you know, I knew he was into his rock music. So I'd sit there and we'd talk about this, that and the other, you know. The silence, and of course, you know, um, it's just one of those things. I don't know. I don't think my mates were scared of me. I don't think they were scared of me. That they were just that day. They just we were in sixth form. So when you get to sixth form in school, I know what you're talking about. So it's sixth form at school, right? Everybody, the last year of school, everybody sticks together. But also, I didn't know this till I left. My sister, my big sister, so she'd left before me, but she used to share me taxi because she was going, her college was in Ormskirk, so the driver who took me to school, um, he said, can you ask if I can just jump in? So I said, yes, I'm sure they wouldn't mind, you know. And they didn't. So she used to come to school with me in the morning and then they used to drop her off at Ormskirk. And it was great because, and sometimes um, if she was going... Sometimes she would just come from, come with me, you know, come if we hadn't seen each other for a while. Because if she was in halls for a couple of weeks, she would just be in the taxi anyway. <laughs> so she'd just come for the ride, you know, which was awesome because she'd come for the ride. And I think she was, if she was going to town or whatever, I don't know. But anyway, she'd come in the taxi and um, I remember this one day, I got out the car and <laughs> um, my, uh, one of my other peers in the class, she would see and speak to them and she, she asked them one day, oh, would you watch over him? 
Um, yeah, thanks. So I didn't really need that, but you know, because everybody was before she asked them that, they were already looking out for me anyway. A lot of the people in the school were looking out for me anyway. Because when that person's, when you leave in school, but the thing is, my message to your kids out there, if you know someone's, um, I don't want to use the word special, but if you know someone's got a disability or they just, they're not, there's something different, right? Then just look out for them. There's no harm in that. Because if you think, if you've got a group of friends there, think you want to treat them like your group of friends. You might not get on with them, right? But let's be honest, you don't want to see them go down shit street. You really don't. Because, you know, I mean, yeah, we know, we all know in school, in doesn't matter which school, mainstream school, special school, there's that rule where year nines, and even now, I, I, I don't really like year nines and year tens because they still think they're the, they're not the cream of the crop. But the, they think they're the top of everybody else. But um, so when, you know, you get the kids that start off in year seven and everybody in year seven, they're as scared as hell. It's a new thing. Everything's new in year seven. And year eight, I'd say in year eight. So when you get into year nine, nothing's new anymore. So if that kid's going to struggle for three years of school, when they get to year eight and year nine, and you've, you've seen them from year seven, you have to look out for them. If you're in the same class as that kid, you have to have their ass all the way. I'm not saying you have to like them and get on with them, but have their ass. You know, if someone is, you know, that's it. Just have their ass all the way. Because they're going to be in your class the whole time, every single year, you know. But when I got to sixth form, we were like a family in the end. We'd seen, we'd, even the pains in the, even the pains in the bum in that class, we still, there was people in that class that showed people with compassion. And one of them sadly passed away quite recently. And I put on his Facebook, um, and I was saying to this the friend, the same friend that I was talking about the other day, I said, that guy really showed me a lot of compassion. Because when I got diagnosed with Asperger's, I remember telling him he was the first one in the class that I told. Didn't tell the others first of all, but I told him he was the first one. No, he wasn't the first one. But he was the first one that was like, whoa, hold on a minute. Do you know, he sat down, he was sat down. And he said, can you tell me that again? I'm like, yeah, mate, I've, I've got Asperger's syndrome. This was in year 10. So from year 10, he, um, I mean, we weren't best of friends, but we weren't worst of enemies. But he had my ass from year 10. Because in year nine, I'll tell you this, in year nine, um, 
he helped me with something um, and got me into a little bit of trouble. No, I got him into a bit of trouble. But anyway. He was doing me a good turn. And he didn't speak to me. And, and then... But um, he processed that. I mean, we had a bit of an argument in the sixth film, but like I said, we were a family, so we weren't going to have arguments. We weren't. It was going to be. It was. It wasn't a box of roses, and especially with the new headmaster that came in and all the rest of that. Uh, check, check out my path part two for on um, Beans World Seven Seven for all of that. But we were a family. Um, and even the people that we didn't get on with in the classroom, we still got on with them because we had to have their ass. And they all, because the thing is, we knew that the people in the other classes didn't give two hoots about us. They hadn't been, they hadn't seen what we'd seen. They hadn't experienced what we'd experienced. Except for the year 11s, but that's another story. <laughs> that's another story. Um, and, and some of the year 10s, the year, the year 9s, year 10s and the year 11s. They hadn't experienced what I, you know, what we were experiencing. I'm going to have to finish this stream in a minute. Um, yeah, tomorrow's going to be a good Friday um, stream. We're going to be talking about beliefs and Jesus and um, all that stuff. But I want to kind of talk about a revelating light. I want to call it psychedelic beginnings, but I'm not going to call it that because psychedelic beginnings would be here all day. Um, but I've refound my faith. Um, I was in torch and it was a little bit before torch but um, I was in torch and they said Jesus is the image of the imaginary God Imagination is already in the Bible. And it's got me thinking, people who have been dissing me for my imaginary friends all my life, that's another story. Well, it's not, it's on the Beans World 77, but I want to bring faith into that. Um, but people have been dissing that for a long, long time. Well, Jesus is imaginary. You don't see him, but... And yet... People don't understand that there's a lot of people that are against having imaginary friends, yet they, they've got Jesus. And Jesus is only imaginary to those that don't believe. There you go. I'll be, I'll be talking about all this on. <clears throat> I'll be talking all about this tomorrow. I'm going to talk about how my journey um, 
will never be the same again. And I'm going to be talking about... Um, I'm going to be talking... See, Jesus died, but didn't. It's, you know, and he had to come from the darkness. He had to go back to the darkness to become the light. So, <laughs> you know, it's what I believe and it's true. I mean, the world was in darkness for a long, long time. Do you know, people's, uh, before Jesus died, nobody could talk to God because they had to go through the high priests. Um, and there was a lot of these people that were trying to get to God but because they couldn't, they went to the depths of hell, which was paradise. And when Jesus died, Since when have you been a bloody he preacher? lived, what? Since when have you been a preacher? I'm not a preacher, I'm telling you what I believe. Whoa. I'm telling you what I, what I believe, right? And it's true. Whoa. Now, if you want to sort of go hippy-dippy, right? Hippy dippy. Hippy dippy. Right? What's that? In the beginning, we trap in the new beginning, in people the beginning, no, uh, people travelled. Now they travelled a long way to Jerusalem. Right? They travelled a long, long way. And on that travel, on that as they they are hot then <laughs> as they were travelling. Um, they experienced pain. He's going out. Oh, he doesn't want to know anymore. <laughs> yes, we've done it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Can I get some hallelujahs in the comments? Um, basically, as they travelled, they felt anxious. Now, I'm not talking about anxious, a bog standard kind of anxious. I'm talking an anxious in the heart. I'm talking about the change that was coming. I'm talking about the, the wind was about to change for these people. And they lifted palms and they saw Jesus coming on a donkey. And people knew, and they came from different directions. They knew that Jesus was the way. So even the people that were lost or thought that they were lost and they'd heard rumours and they weren't sure if these rumours were true. You can imagine if you're reading a map and everywhere, you know where you're going, but you get lost along the way. Well, these people knew where they were going, but they weren't sure anymore. It's like they were lost along the way, but they weren't sure about being lost. So this new anxiety was coming because they knew, they knew they'd found the way, but they also knew that they were lost and they knew how were they going to find the way. So they knew that Jesus came and they knew, the crowd knew that they were going to be saved. They knew that they were going to be saved. Right? Right? Now, after Jesus died, I'm going to talk, I'm just going to flip the page to um, the 1960s, right? Um, because there's a, I want to talk about the, the travelling folk, right? Not the gypsies. We don't, we, people get mixed up with gypsies and druids, even I do. Gypsies, druids and hippies. And travellers. They're all... People say there's a lot of people who don't know thoroughly, probably. They say all oh, these people that are travelling are 
um, hippies or druggies or tippies or whatever, right? No. They're all there to teach people how to live the road. You look at the um, travellers in 1969, a lot of them were teachers and gurus, came on to be politicians and great leaders of communities. And they had to fight for their right to be leaders of communities. Great community leaders, they got strong communities. And the police didn't like them and the government didn't like them because they thought they were, um, what's the word? They thought they were um, breaking down civilization, smashing civilization. A lot of these people, yeah, there were people that were ruining it for others, people who were littering and making mess and all the rest of it. But for the rest of them, um, they weren't doing that. They were cleaning up other people's mess. This is what you don't read about. Um, you know, the people went and cleaned up all the litter and whatever. The reason they were pushed out by the police was because they thought they were the um, organisers. They weren't. They were not organisers at all. And they still having to fight the system because of because the, the their ambassadors and some of them are great. Um, great politicians and stuff. But they they want to carry on living how they've been living because they can... Um, because they know how the system works. Even in, in a time now, um, they want to stop people from making money. A lot of these people that travelled the road, they were getting money off people who were stuck. You'd stuck, you know, you'd be lost in the middle of nowhere. Next minute, there'd be a guy down the road in his caravan and he would repair cars. And while your cars are getting repaired, um, there'd be a festival around the corner. There'd be, um, you know, people serving tea and coffee. There'd be people, um, doing all kinds of stuff. Because say you could have your car repaired or your motorbike repaired, and then you could go down the road and there'd be a festival, or you could go down the road and there'd be, um, people who, um, you know, would be able to help you out some way. And these people were moved on because they thought they were causing trouble. Because other people would ruin it for them. There was a massive war on this. Not a war as in the war that you think, but 
there was a ward of controversy. Police brutality, that's what defeated a lot of it. Um, and a lot of squatters, they carried on being nomads because they knew how to live. You can't teach someone a different way of living if they don't want it. You know? I mean, people say about homeless people being being a problem. Well, they're there because the homeless people are homeless because half the population have made them that way. But we won't get into that. <laughs> we won't get into that. It's a bit of a a dodgy situation. And no one, no one wants to support them because they think, well, they're a druggie. But you can get people off the drugs. How? You support them. It takes guts to do it, but people have done it. Do you know, you know how they do it? A good kick up the ass. Decent rehabilitation. But of course, um, there's a lot of politics into rehabilitating people. And a lot of people don't want to know. And every year you have a lot of destruction. But a lot of these people, a lot of these um, A lot of the brutality, the people that are against it, a lot of the people are doing drugs anyway. And, you know, they'll never tell you that. A lot of people who are against something do it themselves. It's been known. They did it, they've shown it. But they don't, they're so quiet about it. 
And then the big boss man has to sack them so he's doing his job properly, but they get moved on. They can get a job somewhere else. And that's the truth. But they won't tell you that. It's something you've got to work out for yourself. You know? You have to sort of, you've got to look at that truth to understand, you know. See, I'm not, I'm not against a lot of people, you know, a lot of good people that are like, you know, for communities. Um, I'm not, a, I'm not against anyone who's got any, you know, proper way of thinking because, you know, it's the, they say it's the majority, the minority, not the majority. So yeah, if you're a part of these convoys and you go around and you start cleaning other people's mess, just remember, you won't get thanked. Not one, what, not one iota, but it's a good thing to do because you're not, you're not just helping the environment, you're giving the place a good name, you're giving, you know, you're giving these, that you, 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 you've got a good name for yourself. Not, you know, um, it's not a name that you're going to be probably thanked for, but at least it's, you know, you're going to be, it, it's a hard one. It is a really, really hard one, you know? Oh, that Karen was watching, was she? Good. <laughs> I've, I'm going to re-upload it. Ah, oh, she was a right Karen. She was. But I'm glad there's people that know her. She's, um... You've got to teach her. You've got to teach these people. You know? Um... Like, she was all for helping me in the beginning. That didn't bother me. What bothered me was that she was like, oh, are, you, are, you, <coughs> are you sure you're allowed to be out on your own? I'm thinking, right, okay. I wasn't in a telling off mood, but that's why I made that video. I had to stop near a wall to do my maps and everything, and then I had to hail someone else. I couldn't carry on. I had to stop somewhere else safe and stop someone else. And But I made a thing about it because I just think people don't really, you know, I don't care who it's offended. I think people need to learn. <laughs> I'm sorry. Not in that instance. You know, people are probably saying, no, well, I need to go back to kindergarten because I don't even know how to, if I get lost, I don't even know how to find my way properly. Well, I just pray to heavens and God that if you get lost, no one helps you out. There you go. And I just hope, and I just hope some patronising person, right, rushes you to a point where you're still lost and you can't find your way. There you go. That's, um, that's, that's just, that's just, all I want to say, all I want to say to those who don't get it. 
But to those that do, I had a great, mo um, I had a fantastic mobility instructor. His name was Carl Moore. Fantastic guy. I've had other mobility instructors. Some haven't been as great, but you know, you only learn from the best, don't you? In my opinion. And the one thing that I've learned is people don't know what landmarks are. And you're thinking, gosh, seriously. Which is why I think people need to learn about maps in school. It's something you need to learn about because that teaches your landmarks. And yeah, I, I scream about this on my YouTube channel. But there's a reason. I want these people to learn. I get mad because these people don't. Why bother even help someone if you're not, if you're going to be a, if you're going to come out with something like that. And it's not, my confidence hasn't been uh, thrown by that at all. But yeah. Trip her up with your cane, probably will do. Anyway, on that note, we're going to leave it there because I want to go to the toilet. Welcome to Live Chat. Switch camera. Welcome to Sorry, buddy, I don't get what you're asking. I don't know what the what is for. There's a what, and uh, I'm not seeing what the what is for. Anyway, we're finishing it there. Welcome to Live Chat. Switch camera, filters, microphone, same pilot, zero one, zero. Finish, finish, button, alert. Are you sure that you want to stop? Are you sure that you can cancel? End.